Our first lesson for Module 8, which is Solving Systems of Linear Equations, is going to be 8.1a, Solving Systems of Equations by Graphing. And our goal for this lesson is to learn the basic concept of a system of equations and how to solve a system graphically. Now we're getting back into graphing with this lesson, so you will need to use graph paper for uh, for all the examples or, and for any homework that require you to actually make a make a graph. So make sure that you got your graph paper ready and we're ready to talk about what a system of equation is and then we'll look at how we can solve a system using graphing. So first we want to go ahead and define what a system of equations is and a system of equations can be defined as a set of equations and for our class it will always be two. So two equations um, so if you want to re replace a set of, you can just put two equations using the same variables. The solution to a system of equations is the ordered pair that both equations share. Now I know that sounds pretty complicated, but essentially what we're going to have is we're going to have two equations. Both equations are going to have x and y for their variables, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify the point on a coordinate graph, a coordinate grid, where the two graphs intersect. The point where the two graphs intersect, that is the answer to our system of equations. So that's what we're trying to find. That's what we're trying to identify when we're solving a systems of equations problem. So let's begin with a little bit of review on how to graph a single line. We're going to be graphing two lines on the same coordinate grid. But just to start, I want to do a little bit of review. So our first equation, we have y is equal to negative x plus 4. Now to graph this, there's two things we need to identify. We need to identify a value for m and a value for b. m is our slope, b is our y-intercept. When we were graphing back in modules 3, 4, 5, 6, we talked about how we were not getting away from this, that it was going to be coming back. So we need to go back, if we need to go back to those notes to recall how to do this, then that's fine, that's what we need to do. So for our value for m, what we're doing is we're looking for the number that's in front of our variable, in front of our x. And right now all we have there is a negative sign. But we remember that if we want, we can put a 1 in between the variable if there's no number written there. So our value for m is going to be negative 1, and we want to write our, our slope value as a fraction. So instead of writing it as just negative 1, we're going to write our slope as negative 1 over 1. Okay, so that's our slope value. Now for our y-intercept, our value for b, that's whatever our constant term is, whatever number we're adding or subtracting to the equation. In this case, we're adding 4, so our y-intercept is going to be 4. Now, when we graph an equation like this, we've got our two critical pieces of information. We have our slope, we have our y-intercept. We need to recall that we start by, by plotting a point at our y-intercept. Even though slope is the first thing that we see in the equation, we start with the y-intercept, which is b equals 4. So this y-intercept tells us how far to go up or down on the y-axis. Because this value for our y-intercept is 4, positive 4, that means we're going to start at the y-axis and count up 4 units to place our first point. So our first point on this line is going to go right here. Okay? So, and again, I got this point here using my y-intercept value that was right here. Now I need to plot more points for this line. And for that, I'm going to use my slope. Now slope, if I remember, is rise in the numerator and run in the denominator. Rise tells us how far to go up or down. Run tells us how far to go left or right. So since my rise is going to be negative 1, I'm going to go to the point that I plotted already, and I'm going to go down 1 unit for my rise, and then I'm going to run right 1 for my denominator, for my run. So my next point is going to go right here. Again, I got that by going down one, so down one unit, and then right one to get my point. Now I can do the same thing again, down one, right one, and even one more time. And if I want, I can do the opposite of that as well. Instead of going down to the right, I can go up and to the left. 
and I can do that again. Now when you're graphing at home, you want to make sure that you're using a straight edge, your ID, or something along those lines in order to, in order to draw your line. Um, I don't have a straight edge that I can put on my iPad, so I'm just going to freehand it, but I want you guys to make sure that you're using straight lines. Let me try that again. So that purple line that I have on my graph represents the equation y equals negative x plus 4. Okay? So it's not a perfect line, but it goes through, goes through most of the points pretty well. Again, you would want to use your ID to make sure that you are drawing a straight line. So that's a quick recap of how we graph a single equation. So now when we're graphing a system of equations, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a second graph to our coordinate grid. So if we continue with this example, I'm going to put another equation on my example. And we're going to use y is equal to 3x as our example. Now to show that this is a system of equations, what, the, what each problem should have is they should have a brace symbol like what I have here. Some people call that a curly bracket or something like that. I like to think of it as a um, kind of like a Jay Leno chin. Uh, if you, I don't know if you guys know who Jay Leno is, but he's got a big chin. So that's my that's my Jay Leno chin. There's the eye in the in the in the mouth. You guys don't have to do that. Just amusing myself right now. So again, a brace symbol is this symbol right here. That symbol tells us that we're dealing with a system of equations. It tells us that we need to graph both of those equations on the same coordinate grid and identify the point where they intersect. So just like for our first equation, we identified the slope and the y-intercept of our purple equation. We're going to do the same thing with the red equation as well. So our slope is going to be the number in front of the variable, which is going to be 3, and I want to write that as a fraction. So it's 3 over 1. And our y-intercept is whatever the constant term is that um, is being added or subtracted to the problem, and there isn't one for this problem. If there isn't one, our y-intercept is zero. That tells us that since we start with the y-intercepts, we're going to start at the origin. So we're going to start right here at the origin with this problem. In order to get more points, we're going to do rise over run. So we rise 3 and run right 1. Rise up 3, run right 1. So from this point here, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3 units, then run right 1. So my point is going to go here, and I can do that again. From here, I'm going to go up 3, right 1, which helps me to put my other point right there. And if I want, I can do the opposite of that as well. Instead of going up and to the right, I can go down and to the left. So I would go down 3, left 1 put my point here. And now that I've got my points plotted, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line through those. My line's not perfect, but I would expect you guys to use a straight edge to make sure that your lines are perfect. Now I said earlier when we were talking about what a system of equations is actually all about. We are trying to identify the point where the lines intersect. That is the whole purpose with this. It's a lot of work, or all the work comes in identifying where those two graphs go. So our purple line is right here, our red line is right here, but all the work that we did to get those graphs on the paper is to identify where these two points intersect. And so the solution or the answer to this system of equations is going to be this point right here, but I don't want you to just circle under your paper. In fact, you don't need to do that at all. I want you to write down what the coordinates are, and the coordinates for that point are 1, comma 3. That is the answer. That is the answer. 1, comma 3 is our answer to this systems of equations. Okay? So essentially what we're saying is when we're given a problem like this, essentially when you see that you're, at, you're being asked, all right, where do these two lines intersect? And your answer is they intersect at 1, comma 3. Okay? Let's take a look at one more example like that. For a second example, we have y is equal to negative 2x minus 4, and y is equal to 3x plus 1. So here's our system of equations. We know it's a system of equations because we have this brace here. 
And on top of that, we have the two equations in the brace telling us that we need to graph both of those equations. So for our blue equation, we need to identify our slope and our y-intercept. Green equation, we need to do the same thing. All right, so we have a place to identify our slope and our y-intercept for both equations. So go ahead and take a moment, see if you can identify those. Again, slope, you want to write that as a fraction. Y-intercept can just be a number by itself. Go ahead and take a moment to identify those values, pause the video, write them in, and then we'll come back together to talk about them as a class. All right, for slope, for the blue equation, we see we have this negative 2 out in front of the x. That means we're taking negative 2 times x. So our slope is going to be negative 2 over 1. Our y-intercept is going to be our constant term. So that is going to have a value of negative 4. Green equation, we have a value of 3 in front of our variable, meaning our, our slope is going to be 3 over 1. And our y-intercept is going to be the constant term that's being added to the equation in this case. So that's going to be 1. If you want to write a plus 1 there, that's fine. You don't have to. If you want to write a plus in front of the 3, you can do that as well. Again, things you don't have to do, but if you think that helps you, then feel, fr feel free to go ahead and do so. Let's start with our blue equation with our y-intercept. We have b is equal to negative 4, meaning we start at our y-intercept and we start off by going down 4 units. So we're going to go down 4 units and put our first point right there. Now after that, We've got our first point at our y-intercept. We get additional points now using our slope. So from the point I just plotted right here, I'm going to go down two units and then right one unit. So down two, right one will give me a point right there. So there's my first point. Now I've kind of run out of room on my graph going in that direction. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around and go the other direction. Instead of going down and to the right, I'm going to go up and to the left, giving me a point there, and I'll do that one more time, up two, right one, and now I've got my line. So here's my blue line, representing my blue equation, y equals negative 2x minus 4. Next I want to take a look at my green equation. My y-intercept is 1, so that means I want to start off by counting up 1 from the y-intercept, or from the origin, I'm sorry, and put my first point there. Again, I got that point by going up one from the origin. Now, from that point I just plotted, I'm going to go up three and right one. So from here, I'm going to go up three and right one. And I'll plot a point there. And I'm getting close to running out of room going that way as well. So I'm going to go the other direction, down 3, and left 1, putting my next point there, and I can do the same thing again. Down 3, right 1, giving me a point at that location. Now I can go ahead, I see that my points are in a straight line, so I'm going to draw a line going through all of those. And again, my line is not perfect. I expect yours to be perfect when you use your straight edge. But now what I'm trying to do is I want to identify the point where the lines intersect, and that happens to be right here. Okay, those lines intersect at that point, and so that point right here is my solution. So my solution to this system of equations is simply that ordered pair, which is going to be negative 1 comma negative 2. That's it. I'm just looking for the point where the lines intersect. So those are two examples where I'm actually showing you guys how to do a graph. Uh, next, what I want to do is real quickly show you a couple of special cases that you might encounter when going through these types of problems. All right, so for our first special case, let's say you get done graphing your first line, and it doesn't matter the direction or the, the slope of the line or anything like that, the slope or the y-intercept of the line, but you plot your first point, and then as you start plotting your next point, you realize, wait a minute, everything is lining up with what I already put on my graph for my first line. 
and you realize that the two lines perfectly overlap. Okay, that is a special case. When you get two lines that, inter that overlap like that, that is called all solutions, or infinitely many solutions. All right, we talked a little bit about that back in Module 7, Lesson 4, that Mrs. Murray made a video for us for. So all solutions is when you have the graph of a line completely overlap another line that you just graphed. That means that the two lines essentially are equal to each other, and so every point along that line is a solution to that system of equations. And this is going to happen when you have the same slope and same y-intercept. All right, it's going to happen when you have the same slope and the same, y, same y-intercept. So you might even be able to recognize that you're going to have all solutions when you're identifying your values for slope and y-intercept if they're equal. If both slopes are the same and both y-intercepts are the same, then you should know that you're going to end up with all solutions because your graphs will overlap. Okay? So that's our first type of special case. There are two types of special cases. Our first special case is all solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at our second, uh, second special case. For our next special case, you graph one of your lines and you get something that, again, it doesn't matter the direction or the, the slope or the y-intercept or whatever it is, but you, you get your graph. And then as you start to graph your other line, you start to notice something as well. So you plot your points and think, man, those, those lines, I'm not sure if they're going to touch anywhere. And it turns out that these lines are, in fact, parallel to each other. So parallel lines are never going to intersect. Again, what we're trying to find with the systems of equations is we're trying to find where the lines do intersect. But these lines are never going to intersect. So this one, our answer is going to be no solutions. Or some people might call it the empty set, or they might give it a symbol like that, okay? All of them mean the same thing. It means that there is no real answer. And the way that you get this type of answer is you have the same slope. So just like with example 3, we're going to have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Okay, so for all solutions, all solutions, we have same slope and same y-intercept. For no solutions, which is going to look like parallel lines, we're going to have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Okay, so those are our two special cases. If you have any questions about this video, please make sure to write them down so that we can go through them together in class. It's my hope now that going through this video, you have an understanding of the basic concept of a system of equations and what we're looking for. So again, just basically trying to identify the point where the lines intersect. And then also how to solve those systems graphically and understanding that we need to graph both lines on a coordinate grid and identify the point where they intersect. Again, any questions, write them down. We can go over them together in class on Wednesday.